The following is a presentation of ComedyVoices.com. Hi, it's Lisa Ann, and it's so great to be on the TFM podcast today. What a pleasure. We got some great emails. You are fantastic. Uh, This is an episode for the ages. Check it out. Hey, it's time to visit ComedyVoices.com. Powered by digital media. Find your voice. Led by Stand Up Labs and UCB Comedy, you'll get your fill of cutting edge laughs to get you through the daily grind. Subscribe to your favorite show now on ComedyVoices.com, a digital media production. Coming to you from the top of the Stand Up New York Comedy Club. This is a Stand Up Labs production, powered by ComedyVoices.com. Find your voice. Hello and welcome to TFM Podcast. This is J Train, Jared Freed, coming to you live from New York City's Upper West Side, Stand Up New York Labs. We're here every Tuesday and Friday with your emails, your stories, your questions. Um, very excited about today's guest. Uh, if you're listening or watching on YouTube, the it is not a surprise anymore. We have uh, the real Lisa Ann. Yes. I is here. So happy to have you. It's great to be here, man. Uh, you may have seen her uh, on your computer screen on your lap near you. I don't know. <laughs> I may have popped up when you typed in a word and looked for something else and found something else. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. That's how these wormholes go. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's what gets the warm up. Yeah, you're you know? right. Yeah. But well said. <laughs> Lisa, I'm pumped to have you here. You guys know Lisa from, I mean, you're a real business woman. That's, that's and I want to, you know, you, the word porn star gets like thrown around and I, like it's amazing because I went to the, I was telling you, I went to the Avian yep. Awards and you go to the Avian Awards and these women that, and men that are, you know, porn stars and working in the industry, they are out there hustling and they're smart and they know what they're doing and the real people will be like, oh, it must have been crazy. It wasn't crazy. Right. It was a, it was a, it was like a convention. It is. It, it was, was as if they, it was as if the, the audio industry was there. It yeah. could have been anybody. What people don't realize is there's so many bad writers in the business. So when we get these scripts to perform in these movies, and we have to read this ridiculous nonsense. Yeah, it dumbs us down to America, <laughs> and so it's all they see. And then when you have a normal conversation, you just blow everyone away. And I love the fact that I can be a silent killer. Like yeah. people just look at me like, oh, she's a porn star, and I'm like. Cool. So you don't fear me, which is great. Yeah, people. People. They take down out. their. You know, they yeah, take down the fences that exactly. they would have put up, and they they open up to you. Right. Ah, I, man. I I couldn't. I, I was. I remember that was the shocking part for me. I was like, oh, these. The, I connected more with the people in the industry than I did. Like, you know, there were fans there, and you're looking at them, and you're like, what is wrong with these people? Those people spend so much money to go to that event, to be in Vegas for that week, to see their their favorite porn stars in person and wait in lines for hours. And what people don't realize, too, is you sign all day as a starlet, yeah. and then you might have a little bit of downtime to eat and get your makeup redone, and then you have events to do all night. Uh-huh. And so it's like it's four like 20-hour days in a row, so there's not a lot of time for partying. Oh, my God. And so now you're retired, yep. and now you guys can all find Lisa on Twitter, the real Lisa Ann on Twitter. Also, she she has a book out. I'm going to hold it on f- up for the YouTube viewers at home. Uh, it's called The Life. This bitch wrote a book. This bitch wrote a fucking book. Yeah. Yeah. How, what? Give me the the one sentence synopsis of this book. What, what can people expect? Understanding what's changed so much about the business from when I got in in the early 90s to when I left and just kind of the funny scenarios that you go through as a porn star. I mean... So it just talks, it's basically what it's like to be a porn star. Well, what it was like for me to get in yeah. and what it was like for me to exist. And then when Palin happened and I also took a break from the business, I was married and I didn't shoot scenes during that time. And I owned a day spa for four years. I've done different things. So everything's kind of in there. But, you know, when I was younger, being yeah. that I was born in 1972 and I graduated you look great. In, in 1990. When did you graduate? When'd you go, when, when were you born? I was born in 85. Okay, close. So yeah. when I was graduating high school and mm. you were five, 
Dudes weren't coming on our face. <laughs> that, I mean, I don't know if it's that, East is that in this book? Dudes weren't coming on our face, chapter five? They weren't. Ch- they, chapter four, I Where think. Where were they coming? coming? <laughs> in you know, socks. like on your stomach. Yeah. Like a, they were I, more polite. There was a little more well, class. I just don't think they knew how to do it yet because you only. Is that something you uh, you like? I, I I don't know. Well, what's funny is the first time someone came on my face was on set. And I remember I was laying out my contract terms. Yeah. And they said you have You're to You're like, I want the green M&M's. Yeah, well, they also don't know. I want the cum no, no. on the small of my back. Back then, if you had a 12-month deal, <laughs> yeah. you only did two facial cum shots because you got paid more for them. That That's more? Back then, now it's not. Now everyone, it's like, everyone, now that's like breathing. Dude, a guy on a fucking train could come on my face. You know what I mean? It's got no level of importance anymore. You know what I'm saying? How, how did you first get into the industry? What made you uh, make the leap? Well, I was already stripping, and I started stripping at a club that had porn stars coming in every week. Yeah. And I was like... Can you explain that? I didn't know that, like, so with the internet, you had to go, you have to go on the road. You, you know, it does help to go on the road, because once the internet popped and started stealing all the porn, mm. there wasn't as much money to make in porn, but you could make more money than ever if you were willing to do personal appearances, because you could fill a club in a minute, because everyone knows who you are. So you would show up, so let's say a club in, you know, Long Island. Okay. Let's say Long Island, okay. which is Rainier here. They would be, there's a club that would be like, hey, we want to hire you to yep. come, and we'll promote it as Lisa Ann is going to be here doing, you know, be dancing, right? And they pay would pay for two plane tickets for me, because I always brought security, two yep. hotel rooms, and then my show rate. So I got paid each time I went on stage a specific amount, and then after the show, I would sell my merch. So I would sell my DVDs, photos of me, and everyone would buy a photo. This is exactly what porn. it's like to be a comedian, which is the weirdest part <laughs> for me to hear right no, now. No, no. It is so similar <laughs> now that I'm learning more about comedy yeah. and, and how you really have to survive because... You got to go on the road. And when I first started, no one was paying for plane tickets. I was getting like a $200 travel allowance, and that meant you had to budget your hotel oh my and God. your yeah, travel. Yeah, an all-in rate. You know, all-in rate, right? Mm. So I would drive, and I drove with a friend of mine. And, and driving cross-country when I was young was actually super fun because I didn't give a fuck that I was staying in Red Roof Inns back then. Yeah, I mean, it's... You, you get you, have better parties at Red Roof You're young, you're yeah. going out. Would you go out with any of the guys that would show up at the strip club? Like, what What do you, What was your life socially like? Well, back then, because I wasn't making as much money, I was sharing a room with the security guy I traveled with. So that's like a permanent cop block, you know? Oh, you're not, yeah. You're not going to make it. I'm not one of the girls be like, go sit in the lobby, although I know girls have <laughs> done that to big, people. Like, big de- bouncer-looking yeah. dude. Dude. So that Mr. didn't really Clean. happen. There were some celebrities that came in, some athletes that came in that I would like leave with them because I knew they weren't going to try and kill me because they, you know. You knew the celebrity, their 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 fame is yeah. really your safety net. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you, you got way too much to lose. Yes. You do some stupid shit to me. Is there any, who's the most famous person you've ever been with? I won't tell you. You won't tell? No. I can't get an exclusive here on the TFM <laughs> podcast? Well, we have to get to know each other a little bit better. Okay. Lisa, I really, I'm enjoying your company. I, you know, it's so nice of you to come here. You ready to answer some emails? Let's fucking answer emails. Let's yo. do it. So, guys, go follow uh, Lisa on Twitter at The Real Lisa Ann. Her book is called The Life. You can find it on Amazon or on Lisa's website, thelifelisaann.com. So, Go buy it. Go support Lisa. She's so nice. So nice of her to be here and answer the youths of America. The youths. The youths. The youths. Uh, guys, you can send in your emails. TFMpodcast at gmail.com. That's where you find us. Send us your emails. Uh, keep. Also, I just want to thank you. We've cracked the top 100 on iTunes uh, yesterday, which is very nice Ooh, for me. Very exciting. How did it feel? Felt good. Oh, get a little tingly? It tickled my nuts. Yeah, it's oh, amazing. When you get older, other things feather. that women can just tickle your nuts. I love. Oh, you don't understand. Called progress, baby. I loved it. I, oh, it was it was salted my nuts so hard. I'm fucking jacked to be here when you're oh, so hyped. Too. So hyped. So I, I guys, if you can keep spreading the word to friends, keep telling your buddies, your sisters, your brothers, your sorority sisters, your fraternity brothers, keep spreading the word. Keep liking us on iTunes and commenting. It really helps us out. Let's go to the emails. You ready? I'm ready. Lisa, so pumped to have you here. Why won't she reciprocate? J Locomotive. Happy wait, wait, wait. Was that the subject matter? Yes. That's a great subject. I'm telling you. You get great emails. These are great. It's so hard to not just bounce around and read them all immediately. That's a great subject I get matter. A, we get like 50 a week. Why so this is won't like, she reciprocate? Happy New Year. Love the Snapchats. Let me get to the question. I've been dating my girlfriend for almost two years and things are great. I'd say we have an above average sex life. But then again, what do I know? I try to spice <laughs> things up. I try to spice things up by going down on her and more than, occasion, more than just occasionally. 
Not every time, but enough to keep it uh, part of my regular arsenal. <laughs> the only problem is I can count on one hand the number of times she's gone down on me. And never to completion either. She'll get a few sucks and then just ask me to fuck her. <laughs> it sounds like... Doesn't the way he put it, like, make it sound like she's, like, uh, just a couple sucks? <laughs> you know, like he's a straw or some shit. Uh, so then she complains. So never to completion either. A couple sucks and then asked me to fuck her. She complains about a gag reflex and being a lot of work, but sometimes Ugh, I'm a looking. a lot of work? Uh, but sometimes I'm looking box for a good ten minutes. Ten minutes! <laughs> First I of even, all. He writes, I even eat butt. Is there any way to get a good old-fashioned mouth party for strong medium penis? What do you think, Lisa? First of all, he needs to tell her that this is not called blow fun. It's called blow job. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you're bringing heat, Lisa. Bring Look at the this. fucking heat. And you're right. Blow As a job. director, I used to walk into set when I would see a girl who just, she had no fucking. Wait, so none. you would direct films uh, yes. and you'd look at them I'd and be like, this ain't. And I'd fun. say, you, would, <laughs> you fucking better suck that dick like your paycheck relies on it because it yeah. does. It's not blow fun. It's blow job. Because the same. it's just like, if a girl would hold it like super limp, I would be like, oh my God, grab it. Grab it. Grab it. Yeah. But if they had those long, scary nails too, I would be like, be uh, careful how you grab it. black women are crazy. So this is a <laughs> tough one. I want to ask you this. I love that you're like a, you're like a porn drill instructor. Yeah. Oh, you, know? oh, you have no idea. <laughs> you there are many in. fucking times I walked. This called blow fun. This is blow job. Don't be a paycheck on performer on my set. Okay. Do not be a paycheck performer on my set. Well, I, I kind of like that, that, that view on it is like, you know, a guy wants to keep his girl. He's going to go down on her. He's going to be a good sexual partner. A girl wants to keep her guy. She's going to, own up to that contract as well, right? As a woman, there's nothing better you can do for your man than just give him the completion blowjob, just randomly pick it once a month, and just I be can't like, help. I'm, I'm meeting you at the door, you say that. and I'm just gonna fucking suck you to completion. So and how does she? How does he approach a two year relationship? Has, uh, that's the problem. How yeah. do you stick around when she's not good at the blowjob? This I've concerns dumped girls, me. I, I've been with girls before where they didn't do blowjobs, and I was like, I'm out. Uh, did you a try to discuss it or did you just realize why should I force her to well, do it? She doesn't there, want to do it. There's another thing to it where it's like I – there's something else off about this person. <laughs> if they don't care enough about me to do that when I'm doing – and I go – I'm a big downtown. I, I'm going down. Okay. I want to kill. I'm a comedian. I want to you know, get her going. So – and, like, you know, he's even licking butt. He, it's going to be a tough conversation to have. Uh, but it's important to discuss yeah. because it's going to be a deal breaker eventually. So it, you're going to explode in other ways. Yeah. And you just yeah. have to say to her, it would be very special to me if we if you could give me a blowjob to completion. Like yeah. if she completely snaps at it, then, you know, long term, she's not there for you. I mean, dude, you lose your legs. You need to you know your girl's going to finish you off down yeah. the road. I, uh, Anything could happen. Just go up to her and be like, <laughs> yo, toots, I need to get to fruish. Yeah. I mean, like, not a handy. Yeah. But women get sexually lazy in relationships. I will tell you something personal right Please. now. Please. I have a guy that's been in my life for about five years. So I'm on my roster members. In, if they're good, they stay. Hold on. In your life. <laughs> that means he's on my roster. So I asked you before, before we started taping, I was like, uh, do you have any, or do you have any boyfriends? We and hang you, out. You're just hanging out. You just hang out. And roster members <laughs> are categorized in my book by starters. Bench warmers, oh. you know, they all have a category. Okay. So this What's guy, this guy, you know, he's ideally the number one starter, but he's never gone down on is me it, once. Really? Never. This is the personal information. Yes, that this you're is. I've never shared. So why and do so you like, stay with him? What well, is, we only see each other like once in a thing? while, and you know what? I love his penis, and so like I've told my girlfriends, like it doesn't what? matter to me because his penis is so amazing that I think it, it wipes it over. But they're like, what two makes days, a penis a good penis? It's just a beautiful size, and it's just a beautiful. It's it's just is it a, huge? Or it's is a is nice it? size. I'm gonna say in the I'm, size department. You're, you're I saying, think the reason he doesn't go saying, down on girls is because his dick is so big. You're saying <laughs> that like rich people talk about their bank account. It's a good bank it's a, account. It's a good so it's size. definitely a huge penis. It's got a huge penis. And how long? Down to his knee? What the fuck nah, are we talking about? It's not here? that long. It's just nice and thick. And I just really like it. You know? Is there so, such a thing as a like I always say that I have a strong medium penis. It's okay. It's a good, it's a good shape. So I've never had like a girl be like, uh uh-uh, uh, but I've always never had a girl be like, whoa. Like I've been like, <laughs> like I've gotten the Where's the rest of that thing? <laughs> yeah. How far does it go down your leg? I, I get the okay. <laughs> you know, that reaction. Yeah. What you know, what makes a good like what makes a guy a better lay you know what makes this guy a starter is it just the penis size 
He doesn't go down on you. So he's he doing doesn't something go down. Right. And you know what's so great is like now I tell my girlfriends, like, I think I let it go past the point of being able to have a conversation about it because it's been like five fucking years. I've never brought it it's up. It's kind of his position. So I can, I feel with this guy, we're both failing miserably. I like that you've, <laughs> you've kind of, instead of like a basketball team, you've actually spread your, your roster like a baseball team was. You have, you have utility pitchers, probably. You have, you have, you have a go down guy. Of course. <laughs> you have a fuck course. guy. And like, there's guys that I'll, there's guys that I'll make dinner for and there's guys that don't come over before 11 and have to leave by one like everyone has their everyone everyone's has got their, their fit everyone's got the you got relief pitchers yes. starting pitchers closers you I, got, I got what you're doing I think the move for this guy is uh, you, here's what you do you set up a romantic dinner okay and you 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 bring her you bring the, the conversation to her but like in the most romantic way because he does care about her he says it's a good relationship yeah. if I'm him you set up a nice dinner and then mid dinner, you just say you just pass her a coupon, and the coupon says, "Good for one free blowjob for me," <laughs> and see what her reaction is to that. And and when I think she's it's a great idea, and when she looks at it, she'll be like, "What does this even mean?" You'll be like, "Listen, I need to come in your mouth." And and just see how she gauges that. If she gets mad at that conversation. There's more things wrong with this relationship than not. And a lot of it, a lot of women, I can see being self-conscious about it. Maybe she thinks she's not good at it. And in the minute you open the discussion of, like, I really have this, like, sexual urge to to get a blowjob from you. Maybe that's the moment you start talking and she's like, well, I don't feel good about it. I don't right. think I do a good job. And maybe and they can, can watch a couple good blowjob series because there's like instructional blowjob series that teach women how to relax really? their gagging reflex. Do you have any to suggest? How- uh, I don't have any suggestions because uh, somehow I was really good at it from the beginning. <laughs> you were always, but I have heard that these videos you're, you're surfaced. You're a gifted blower. <laughs> TFMpodcast at gmail.com. TFMpodcast at gmail.com. Here with Lisa Ann. You can find her on Twitter at the real Lisa Ann. You can go find her book on Amazon or on her website. Uh, it's called The Life. So go get it. Go get be a supporter. Awesome to have her here. Sister got a bid. Okay? So this is... You know, this is the you've, you're familiar with Total Frat Move, the website. You yeah. said you're a, a yeah. reader. Yeah. So this is uh, this is a, a sorority question from a guy. What up, J- Stain Train? I'm a sophomore at a huge state school where Greek life dominates the social scene. I joined a fraternity last year. Uh, last year, I joined a fraternity that is, by all accounts, aggressively average. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love how honest that is. Yeah, because uh, we you know top tier, middle tier. Right. He's saying he's got a middle tier frat. Don't get me wrong, I love my pledge bros. We're a real tight group, but I'm not delusional about where our fraternities places on the tier system. Okay, so they're not getting as many bitches as other get, fraternities. I get it. Yeah. My biological sister goes to the same school as me. She's a freshman and just went through rush and got a big to the top sorority on campus. Oh, hater. Boner party. Yeah. <laughs> All her sorority sisters are dimes. I've never tried to go to my go after my sister's friends. The concept has always seemed weird to me, but I'd be an idiot if I didn't take this opportunity to chase some quality cat. My question for you, how do I take my sister? How do I take my sister being in this house and use that to my advantage? There's over 120 girls in this house. I'm sure one of these broads would be down to do some sex. Thanks in advance. Your podcast makes my walk to class way more enjoyable. Keep it up. Thank you for that email. Great email. Super cute. You're walking. He will listen to you when he's walking to class. Yeah, I this is fucking what, love. Well, that. that's what podcasts are for. And some people are like, when do I listen to these? I, I just on the way in. to class. Yep. Because uh, I don't want to waste my music. I use my yeah. music at the gym. So when I'm walking and running my errands in the city is when I podcast. That's when I and I'm when I'm on the subway. You. Got I Listen, download it before I get on my flight. Totally. So yep. they, this is for the, and I noticed that when you meet podcast fans, it's very intimate for them. Like you're right in their ear. Yeah. At these weird alone moments. I yeah. listen to a ton of podcasts and like, it's to the point where I've met a few of them. They're like, J train. What's that? And it's like, we've known each other for years. <laughs> yes. It's crazy. What do you think he does about his sister who just joined the hot? Sorority? Okay. This is a, he hit the fucking jackpot. I say, this is the approach. He has to be helpful. He has to come in with the role as a brother that works for the sister where she sees mm. he's bringing value to the house. Whether it's fixing Handyman. something. Yeah. Whether it's being a little extra security totally. for the girls. But totally. where he makes himself a useful fit mm-hmm. that doesn't offend the sister because you want to tread lightly on this and not. And then the right girls will want to reciprocate. Yeah. You want to be a friend to your sister. I right. totally you agree. You want to be, be cool, be cool but still slide in. If you can fix something... 
carry boxes for one of the girls, help somebody move in or out. You're fucking in. I like that every piece of advice you give could be a porno. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, you gotta be the, the maintenance The movers man. showed up. There was a gangbang, but that was just the movers. No, I, I totally agree with that. Like when she moves into her dorm, you gotta be extra helpful. Yeah. When she's looking for a party to go to, oh, you guys should be the be her like kind of wingman yeah. in this thing. And you also don't get fucking butt hurt about her trying to hook up because she might. Sure. What's here's what you do, and I I I've actually she's not gonna want to go down the tier system though to his guys. Exactly. So this is <laughs> this is his major issue. He should not invite these girls to the fraternity house. No, no, no. He needs to go to them. No, he has to form. What he needs to do is create kind of like an A team of his mid tier crew of course he needs to have like a black ops group yes. from his fraternity that's like leaving they kind of leave the house on their own they're the a team and okay? they need to be racially equal yes they need to grab one from each culture you get, you so that they get, can go into this house you, and really break apart and make impact totally he's got to put together he's got to invite these girls to a house party not a fraternity party so he's got to go to a campus like an apartment party set up some sort of pre-game to the bar that everyone goes to. And what you do with this pregame is you get your best dudes from the house at the pregame. I agree. And you set it up so it's a small party. Intimate. You get her and her friends. Yep. And because here's what you're doing. You're getting away from your average uh, life that is your reality. And you're putting them in a bubble that is superior to them the reality. Perfect. Right? I, I think it works. That yeah. works. And, here, and if he brings them to this house, here's what's going to happen. The biggest fucking losers are gonna sh- start poking their heads out. Anytime you bring a hot chick to like a fraternity house, all the oh, it's loser so nerds. Creepy. There's it's it, never it's your cool so, friends it's coming the, out of it's the room. It's the future regular daytime customers at a strip club. Yes, <laughs> it, totally. It, well, because what happens is you bring when you bring a hot chick out to a fraternity house, it's not the guys that are getting hot chicks that are like, oh, who's over? It's the biggest losers in your house that are like, they're like, oh, did you bring over a girl? And you're like, oh no, fucking losers coming here. Right. And now they're poking around, they're hanging out, they're saying shit. You're like, no, this eliminates your loser guys in the house and brings it so you only have the studs. I agree. TFMpodcast at gmail.com. TFMpodcast at gmail.com. We're here with Lisa Ann. Thank you, Lisa. You've been, this is amazing. You're great. So pumped to have you here. Thank you. Go follow Lisa on Twitter at the real Lisa Ann. Go buy the book, The Life. This one's called Dick Picks. Ooh, I like the subject I, matter. I chose these emails specifically for you, Dick Lisa. Picks I knew are you were coming. something that, uh, interesting enough, I decorated a Christmas tree at my agency with Dick Picks. Really? Because. Well, so your many, agency was. So I had a talent agency for about four years in the industry where I was booking girls and guys to do shoots in this. Let and that. me tell the listeners something right now. Um, you're a business woman. Yeah, I've been a hustler. You hustle. Like, I went. I did some research on my own, and I knew that you had an agency. I knew that you were a director. You were on Howard Stern like, when I was nineteen. Back in the day, and I when, when you're told like, it, what's your relationship like with family? Like, uh, are they cool? Oh, with- right now we're 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 kind of on a break. Um, oh. <laughs> we're kind of on a break because my parents were horrified when I told them I wrote a book. That's what so horrified I'm like, them. Okay, gangbangs were acceptable, <laughs> but it's just, why? Because it's personal. But I've had a, a disconnect why? with my family for many years. I was out on my own, sixteen, and so we didn't reconnect. I was older, and this, and so I think they were just very fearful. You know, when I retired and I started living both places, New York and L.A., mm. and I got my gig with Sirius. Like one of my visits home, a family member said to me, "Like just so you know, everyone's tw- twice as mad at you now as they were." When you were in the business, and I'm like, why? That he said, because your plan worked, and everybody's yeah. fucking furious. You did it. How is this possible you, that you're living better than everybody in our family, and they never had your back? And so, there's a little annoyance there. So I think the book represented to them like they feel like they failed, you yeah. know. But I you really won. did. You, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I, I'll say this: though. we give advice on this podcast. So I, I used to work in finance. I sold life insurance and annuities. And what happens is that any job you go to or any world that you're in is. You only see how people are successful in your bubble. Right. So I remember, you know, when I was going to leave my job to do comedy, I, I, everyone at the finance place, there only there was only one way to make a hundred thousand dollars. That's it. There was only That's one it. way. And you're foolish if you don't do it exactly if like you, them. If you're foolish, you're foolish. So I remember being at this place and being very fearful of leaving because they get in how, your head. Because how else is there to make money except this one job? But then you realize. 
there are successful people at every and unsuccessful people, yeah. but there's a successful person doing every single job that exists. And the most interesting people you've met are people that tried things and didn't mind failing yeah. at them and had new adventures, but back to the dick pic tree. Yes. So what I had the agency <laughs> was really before everyone- Thank you for getting us yeah, back to reality Yeah, on here. track. This was really before Twitter popped and there were all these instant ways to send dick pics. Yes. So guys were actually mailing Are you them. on Snapchat? I eventually I, I am, but I just stay off of it. It's just I'm on one Snapchat. more thing. J Train Fifty Six, please I'll, find I'll me. Add okay. you. <laughs> just one more thing to look at. I know um, I can't stop. It doesn't stop. But so they would send them in the mail. So one day I got the bright idea that I was gonna. I had Hold all on. I had all male employees. <laughs> Hold on, they were sending these dick yeah, pics in the mail. Dudes would send dick pics to me at the agency, like with this nice little like letter of why I should want to be with the dick. In <laughs> dear, a pic, you dearest know? Lisa. So this I laminated is my sword them. unsheathed for you to see. <laughs> I like, laminated. I Re- 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 like written with a feather quill yeah. super shady looking writing a really tattered looking prison envelope oh. with a lot of anthrax on it and I remember like I decided I was gonna get them laminated and cut them into a shape and laminate them around and I just put yarn through them and then when my place came in the whole fucking Christmas tree was just That's laminated dick so pics. fucking funny <laughs> Wow. Oh, my God. I mean, so you're, you've been in the dick pic game since before. I have. And, you know, dicks are interesting. <laughs> you're the original dick pic game. They're not all, like, I don't think it's a dude putting his best foot forward. Like, yeah. I think you can do better than a so dick pic. He, it's not that many dicks are glamorous looking. I know. It's not like you're, you're, Boobs, you're where you men. can loosely, know. you know, you can lube them up and make them look so pretty. This guy writes, I have a close friend who's been talking to a girl for several months. She's been walking the fence, whether... She, she has been walking the fence whether she likes him or not. I recommended sending a dick pic to cut <laughs> cut to the chase. This is insane. Do you think I'm a little overboard with how I handle this situation? Do you think it's this approach to ever Do you think it's a, a good approach to ever send a dick pic when trying to steer a new relate near a new relationship in the right direction? <laughs> I love this cuz I love the let's let's do some J Train theater. We've been doing this lately. You be the friend asking for advice uh, about the girl you're texting. So, you know, we're just still really texting. It's moving kind of slow. And I just wanted, like, is she going to be with me, bro? Here's what you do, man. Uh, just send that dick. Do you think I should do it selfie style so she sees no, my stomach too or just to, holding it down by a remote here's control what you on do. my TV? Gonna, I'll be your <laughs> photographer. You got to give me photo cred. <laughs> And All I right. want you to take your remote, put it next to your dick. I like the remote pen. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> it's one of my favorites, by the and way. Scene, and scene. Oh, you have direct TV. Uh, <laughs> there we go. It, it, listen, you, <laughs> the remote is what you use. The right? remote is fucking phenomenal. I if do, you reach, it's a good measure. If you get up to the dire- uh, to the to the fast forward, it rewinds. Oh man, you're if, good. If, if you're up into the fast forward rewind part of the, the remote, you're doing okay. Do you know how many people just paused this podcast and grabbed a remote right now? <laughs> Dick pics galore. Bam, 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 bam. They're coming everywhere. Dick I'm up picks. to the last button. I'm good. You, you know, know, I find it really fun to give friends bad advice. So I like, This is bad advice. This is bad advice. Like, I like when my guy friends are going to the strip club, I always tell them the same things. Like, when a girl's giving you a dance, blow on her because all <laughs> strippers fucking hate that they shit. They do? It's disgusting. <laughs> and all the creepy dudes do it. They have really yeah. bad breath. And they're blowing and they're on like, you to try it because the they're not allowed to touch, so they're trying to send you a signal whatever. is what they're doing. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. We have hate it. Have you ever it. gotten a dick pic that you've been like happy to get? Um, yeah, a lot of the male performers, like the night before we'd work together, we'd like game, we'd do a little bit of like pre-gaming and we'd send some dirty pics and they'd send me fun dick pics. literally doesn't exist in anybody's <laughs> reality except your own. Yeah. <laughs> hey, check out what's coming <laughs> at you tomorrow. Can't wait to have that tomorrow. <laughs> this is going to be halfway in you tomorrow. <laughs> can't fucking wait. Get that butthole ready. <laughs> oh, yes. It's getting ready. Uh, so yeah, and also like if a girl leans into you, I told one of my guy friends once he got dragged out of a strip club. I said, if she leans over you and leans over you and her neck is by you, yeah. you need to lick it. Because she wants you to lick her neck every <laughs> no, way. That's he licks the rules. her neck, she fucking gets dragged out of there. And I'm like, so no, don't give your friends bad advice. I don't think the dick pic is a great idea. I've only ever sent a dick pic. I've I've sent them, as most guys have, but never like let's in just, this situation. You never you're never sending you should never send a dick pic. At, and then afterward, after you send, you should never send a dick pic if right after you send it, you go, let's see how this works out. <laughs> you also, should never, don't it send should always, it, You should always know how it's going to go. Don't send dick pics over the toilet. I hate those. People do that? Yeah, where it's just Mid-shit. like hanging over the toilet and they just take the picture. I'm like, I don't want to look at your toilet. No, I, you don't want to. There's so many better. And also, I will critique your room, your mirror, and any laundry yeah. on the floor. 
Yeah, you gotta <laughs> keep a clean. You gotta have. You gotta set up a, a, a up viewing area. area. You gotta, you're on, gonna, a little production you value gotta, in this thing. <laughs> put it like a, you remember. In, uh, you put it. You know what you do is you take the dick pic against a backdrop that's like all lasers, like you did in middle school. Well, that'd be great for your school picture. Yeah, <laughs> little glamour those? shots yes! action. Yeah, little cardboard box covered in carpet to rest your arms on. See, if a funny <laughs> dick pic, I think, is like the move with any dick pic. Like I, I, I don't, I, I'm not here encouraging dick pics. I, I, I agree with you. That, or, or that is not that. That is you should only send a dick pic with, after the texts have gotten sexual and it's someone that you've been with before. Like that should be an invited. No thing. doubt, no you doubt. Know? I agree with you. Like right the night before the first date is not appropriate no. time to send the dick pic. You, you, she has to have seen your dick before you send the dick. Very good. That's this the is advice. a good rule. Yes, must have been visible with the naked eye before it's coming through on a phone apparatus. Because it can be fun. It can be flirty. I guess like I've. Gotten sent pictures from girls. I'm like, oh, this was a nice little Wednesday night for me. See, I'm just so old school. And, and I feel like, you know, when guys ask me for pics, I'm like, why don't you just Google me like everybody else does? You, <laughs> you know can what find I mean? this for yourself. <laughs> TFMpodcast well, at gmail.com. TFMpodcast at gmail.com. Keep sending those emails here with Lisa Ann at The Real Lisa Ann. Got a book out called The Life. Go on Amazon or her website to go buy it. Let's do another email. Yeah, this has been great. I, I love the subjects. So oh, they just yeah. fucking hit it right out of the park in the subject matter. <laughs> so pulling a unicorn. This is a little bit. Sup, Jared. First off, the podcast is the bee's knees. Keep it up. Second. Oh, Thanks, man. the bee's knees. See, old school. Kept it old school Super for you. Super dope. Uh, second, the fact that you added a second episode a week really feathers my nuts. Thanks, man. <laughs> Uh, having a two a week uh, brings me to my question. I recently began talking to two girls in the same sorority. Girl A is a seven seven four. So we have a rating system here at the podcast. Okay, okay. You, men or women can use it. Okay, face body personality. Face body personality. It's the area so code method. He's saying her personality is a four. <laughs> four <yes. laughs> but seven seven. Listen, you can't have it all. Yeah, I guess some yeah. people are fat. And when some you're people young, are bad the personality is not that important. <laughs> yeah. you know? kind of crazy, pretty hot, but likes to get around with my fraternity brother. So she's hooked up with a few of them. Okay, buddies. fine. She gets girl bags. B is an eight seven question mark. Can't really read her personality at this point, but seems pretty chill. <laughs> How would you suggest I go about finessing a threesome? Or if it's even kosher to try, what? He doesn't even know the personality. He's like, yeah, threesome? Uh, here's a little twist. Girl A is girl B's little. So, What's little mean? Like in the sorority, you have like a big sister. Oh, yo, no way can he expect them to be together. But he no could way. use them both. To go out and get another girl. Don't bring the three way in and run the risk of losing two girls in one place. Yeah. Use those two girls as your wing women to go out and meet two other so, girls in a totally separate location. So you're you're saying that the way to a threesome is he has to take one seriously and then have one cartoon. Yeah. In this relationship. Yeah, but you, I don't you think. You can't have two serious girls. I at think a they're too close knit to do it yeah. and have it not backfire and become a problem. Then he can't mess with either of them. Yes. You don't want to lose two. When you got two going, yeah. tread lightly. You want four. Yes. You don't want. Or, you know, he's saying, like, you, so you're. I, I agree with you. I think he's got to choose one of these girls and then make her. The coolest one, or the one that's more game for the threesome. Right. Then you go find yeah. randos. You be the threesome girls just needs to be super rando. They do. Is yeah. It? So any threesome that you, I mean, not have you ever been in a threesome? Multiple, multiple threesomes. I think threesomes are fantastic. Why? It's just extra. You know what I mean? I'm not the type of girl that just wants to be with a girl, but I like to be with a girl, but I need the dude too. So the threesome yeah. really works well because you get the best of both you worlds. You get the pogo stick. Yeah. yeah you get the, you know, all the extra. And there's a lot of watching to be done. You can make her do the, I'm quite a director but, in a have threesome. You ever, have you ever done, you're the director. Yeah, I'm always the director. I'm always, I'm always <laughs> talking always, to everybody, <laughs> telling like, everybody, that moving dick. the hair. This is blow I want job, to be able to see fun. it. I want to see it. Get it wetter. I want to see it. <laughs> Get it wetter. Open that just got more. me hard. Uh, no, it was so, so have you, what's the best approach? If like you were with a guy, what's the best approach to reach out to the girl for the threesome? You know, it's pretty easy nowadays to pick up on and, and I can go out, I, I can attract both sexes really well. So yeah. I'm a good magnet for that. And I can usually tell, it's not something you can talk a girl into because girls either are down for it or they get super offended by yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
It's there's no gray area. There's nobody and that's they don't just, just mad say about no. A yeah, yeah. So I would say take the one with the lower personality that he can gauge is at least a four, and uh, <laughs> she's a seven seven. So she's got the tools to go out and pick up another yeah. girl. You know. Ah oh, man. And college years are the time girls should be fucking girls. It's college. They should be. You're right. They should be doing three ways. It's you college. should be writing college advice books. I, you know, fuck? I think that it's like this is your time to be free. Just, <laughs> this is the just, time to get a little crazy. Just wrap get a little the wild. tool. Do not have any children. But the two friends are never going to work out just the way no. women are it's not they're not gonna be high-fiving while they're fucking you buddy no what do they call it the uh the golden the london tower the, <laughs> they're not gonna the be eiffel tower <laughs> they're not gonna be eiffel tower and they're being not like, gonna be they're not gonna look at each towers. other and be like let's go get some beers after <laughs> yeah. this was great no Take they're gonna want not the, the whole thing about the threesome is like every girl has that desire right to be a little bit go out of their own right. system, go a little crazy. But they don't want to do it in front of their friends because there's a lot of judgment. Exactly. And also girls. there's a little bit of jealousy. So yeah. sometimes if it's two girls that know each other very well and they're both with this guy, well, then they're going to feel like, oh, he liked me more than he liked you. And there's mm. all that. Go with a random fucking some, You want one you're close. You want, a, you want a wing woman. Yep. And a rando. Yeah, because you need the wing woman to be prepared like the rando when she has to leave, this wing woman has to throw her out. Yeah, she's gotta make that yeah, push. She's that gotta little, keep you in a face safe. smush. <laughs> remember, one thing that guys are up against right now more yeah. than ever is bitches lying. Mm. Explain and, that. And it's one of the things you'll see on college campuses and you'll see in the news and you'll see even in porn. We just had an outburst of girls trying to come forward saying James Dean raped them. But yet yeah. not one of these girls went to the police. Not one of these girls ever told a producer. Mm. But yet we have this this authority on Twitter and it's just go out and spread lies. Well, and the, so the, guys the, do get themselves in situations where if a girl wants more from you than you're willing to give her, she'll turn on you like a motherfucker. Yeah. And that, that's kind of the fee. There's, there's, you know, uh, as any woman, you, you know, you mentioned this a little bit. There's a fear of like you know there's big men that are gonna that could attack you that's right. a, that's a real fear that's a i'm not saying these are on the same level but then you know the other the fear for any man is to is to be kind of besmirched right you know right. and right. publicly you know right. degraded and taken right. to jail because sure maybe there's a lot but i'm saying it doesn't happen all the time some you know people are truthful. but you gotta tread lightly with that yeah you gotta be careful yeah, the side girl doesn't even really need to know where you guys live or your real names <laughs> you get the hotel rooms TFM <laughs> I'm a podcast. flight attendant my name is Mary <laughs> there you go <laughs> TFM podcast at gmail.com TFM podcast at gmail.com so we have we're gonna do one more email then we'll do the, some hypotheticals in the news here's your choice oh great I'm okay. gonna give you the choice Lisa buddy trying to bang my chicks chicks plural right chicks plural okay good These kids making are- the move what the fuck? How do I dump? Uh, I think how do I dump? This could be about shit. It could be, but it okay. also could be about a breakup. Okay, so I'm, me and my girlfriend have been together about three years. I love her, but I don't want the relationship anymore because I do want to do fratty douchebag shit with my friends. <laughs> But he loves her. <laughs> that might be the most TFM email of all time. That's, that's the most TFM great, opening line. It's a great, honest, and real email. It's a real one. Beyond that, I want to experience being single in college. She has sev- she has severe seasonal depression, so how do I dump her without making her already low self-esteem worse? And more importantly, how do I handle the wave of sadness and desire to go back to her after it's done? Like I said, I do love her, but I feel it's just time. Uh, for this relationship to be left in the past. It's going to be hard, as we have all talked about living together and getting married. I know, fuck me, right? But anyways, uh, you, man, Sam, are fucking awesome. Thanks for the help. What First you- of all, let's talk about how he doesn't worry about being depressed and getting back. Okay? okay. That's super easy. Okay. You fuck through that, man. You, <laughs> you just fuck through that. Fuck through the sadness. And, and, and you can't you can't even be selective when you're in the fuck through phase. Like uh, yeah, you're gonna you fuck just, some skanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta just go start, all just, over the just board. Just bring lots of condoms, do your thing, just fuck it out. It's okay? an open door policy. There's one. Open open fuck policy. Looking at life like suitcases, uh, this chick's got some heavy bags, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's he can't something. move through life easily carrying her heavy bags. Yeah. I understand he's got good intentions and he doesn't want to hurt her. Yeah. But at the same time, it's holding him back. And the longer he stays with her, see, girls work by clock. So each year that goes by to her, they're married. Like they're one mm. step closer to being this. We're moving they're, towards We're moving it. towards. We're up the mountain. It's so progress. the sooner he does it, the better. And there's nothing 
wrong with him saying, this has been my life for this many years and I've enjoyed it with you, but I feel the urge to go out and see what else is out there and yeah. I don't want to hurt you and it's not about another girl. It's just yeah. about me exploring myself as an independent man totally. and seeing where I want to be later he, down the road. Here's, uh, I totally agree with that advice. I, I agree with after they break up, uh, he should just- Fuck it up. Fuck whoever yeah. comes. That's the if best. It's a, the breakup girls, sex, like guys, the people clowns. you run into later, and you're like, oh, I fucked that, but yeah, yeah I, had, I to. had to get through it. Yeah. Here's the thing. I'm gonna tell him right now. You're not that great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we all think we're all the star of our own movie. Yeah, we're all the star of our own movie. We're all walking through life thinking everyone's looking at us, <laughs> but the reality <laughs> is, you're not that great. Okay. And I know it's hard to uh, to upset somebody with a breakup because, you know, the person doing the dumping has decided, has gotten the chance to decide before the other person has been able to deal with it. So you are giving them the worst surprise party of their lives. Sure. But you're not that great. They'll get over it. They'll yeah. move on. Yeah. Maybe they have some depression issues. If that becomes like a real thing where they are, uh, you know, messaging you and saying things that they're going to hurt themselves, then you encourage them to go seek professional help. And if obviously. it is that severe and you're close with their family, which you probably are, it's not a bad idea to reach out to their family beforehand or during and just say this just happened and I'm just wanting to do my own thing, but I want to make you have your eyes totally. on her. But let's let it get to that point first because I'm assuming – most people uh, have a little bit of depression. Yeah. Most people yeah, of have bad times. Of course. You just get a front row seat to hers because you guys are together. So And and, and there's there's so many people now that are proud to talk about it. Yes. And want to use it as there a are shield. Outlets. Yeah. There, there yeah, are outlets exactly. for her to go other places. So right. just remember that you're just gonna be a boyfriend amongst other boyfriends she's had. Yeah. And at some point she will appreciate the relationship you had if you do the breakup the right way. Yep. If you go and cheat on her, you will always be looked at as an asshole yep. and a douchebag. And you'll scar her. But if you take the opportunity to be a man and say to her, hey, listen, I've had a really fun time with you, but I'm I'm looking to be, I want to be single right now. I'm not as invested in this as I should be. And I want you to have the best boyfriend you could have that won't be me. Yeah. If you say that and you're a man and you man up, she'll look through life's rear view mirror at you with good and kind eyes. Maybe in about 20 years, but the bitch, It'll will, be, take the time. bitch will be psycho for the first year. Fine. But, and then the <laughs> way to not, car. the way to not <laughs> fuck her and be an asshole is to stop talking for at least six months. I agree. Don't reach out. Every time you reach out to her, that's her saying, oh, he's back. And don't fuck her friends. And don't fuck her friends. That's the only but way to fuck go. fuck everything else. And fuck just remember it. I, just remember this. When you're about to go in to break up with her, just keep repeating yourself. I'm pretty average. Just repeat that. I've done that. And you I've, always do the breakup in public. Like the breakup oh, has to be in public. Of course, because then they can't melt down. They can't try and talk you well, into it. The, they can't offer you some beautiful dick. Like it's <laughs> at loan. Guys, I'm easy. You know I what feel I mean? really badly for Adele's ex. That woman has written two albums asking him why. And when there's really, I think I'm writing a column about this tomorrow, but there's really no good answer. No good answer. There's no why that will that will give her uh, fulfillment. Right. So understand that. She's going to ask you, why are you breaking up? Why is this? Yeah, you want to fuck other girls, but that's not why. Nobody leaves their girlfriend because they don't because they want to fuck other girls. They leave their girlfriend because it's not the right relationship. It's not it's clicking not right or you fit. wouldn't be thinking about fucking other girls. Yeah. Other so, girls. so understand that. Realize that you're pretty fucking average and just ma pull that band-aid off yeah. because you'll both be better off. TFM Podcast at gmail.com. Keep sending those emails. Lisa, thank you for answering these emails. You were fantastic. I loved it. I feel like I really helped the world You today. did. You helped the Utes. Yeah, the Utes. <laughs> Fuck it out, Utes. So, uh, go follow Lisa on Twitter at the real Lisa and her book. I'm holding up for the YouTubers at home. Um, the Life uh, Plan Palin, My Love of Sports and Living to the Fullest on My Own Terms. Lisa Ann. Go buy the book on Amazon or on her website. It's the, the life, Lisa Ann.com. There it is. Uh, we're going to come right back with shout outs, hypotheticals, and the news. We'll be right back. I can't say life's a bitch because of what you make of me. You make your own bitch, so you got to leave. Guys, welcome back. Uh, Lisa, you were fantastic. Thank you for I really liked those answering those questions. I yeah. could probably just sit home and do this all day. We got to have you back. Yeah. Uh, go follow Lisa on Twitter. Go get the book. Uh, Mansamp, thank you for coming on. Absolutely. Uh, at Mansamp on Twitter, Mandatory Samson Podcast, every Friday morning. Um, let me do some announcements. I, I talked about 
I went to the AVN Awards. We talked about it in the, in the beginning. If you go to my website, all the videos from the AVN Awards, I, I did three videos, are on my website, jtraincomedy.com. So go to my website, jtraincomedy.com. Um, I'm also coming to some colleges in the near future. If you want me to come to your school, email harryschmuckler at gmail.com. That's H-A-R-R-Y-S-H-M-U-C-K-L-E-R at gmail.com. Um, also, you can go check out all the great podcasts that are, Stand Up New York Labs is putting together at ComedyVoices.com. Absolutely, yep. So go check that out. Um, also, I've been seeing a lot of podcast fans here at the club. I've been getting up here, and we had a whole table full of people that went on the website. So you go to StandUpNY.com, use the promo code TFM, and you get free tickets to any show here at the club. That's dope. That's a deal. It's That's tough to find deals in New York dope. City. Yeah, there's no, you're so right. That's super <clears> dope. <throat> So let's do some shout outs. Sup, J Train. I feel like my friend would absolutely love sent, being sent shits and tits. So on Snapchat, I'm, I'm on Snapchat, J Train 56. Uh, so we put out the word. So people want, I get sent shit pictures every single day. Shit? Like yeah. turds? Just a yeah. dump. Unreal. It's hilarious. Do you rate them? So, no. <laughs> this one's a six, better? Like, sometimes I'll see one so big, I'll be like, you need to go to the doctor. <laughs> you, wow. Yeah, you need to fucking. You can <laughs> definitely take a dick in your ass, yeah. okay? <laughs> <laughs> you would know. So, <laughs> his Snapchat is ACKID88. Uh, other than that, the podcast is awesome. Keep it up. J Train, one of my fraternity brothers, now works as a part time employee under my command, hazing round two. His favorite <laughs> thing to do on the planet is to send, is, is send the grossest shit snaps to me all day long while I'm at my desk. I need help returning the favor. Snapchat is Ro underscore daddy. R-O-E underscore daddy. Please no tip picks. He prefers Pamela Henderson. Cheers, pussy. Uh, what's good, gay train? Give me Rob in my house sci-fi. A shout out, please. Have broad send tits to my snap. <laughs> Sucky. God, they just abbreviate everything nowadays. Totes abbreviate everything on perp. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, you can do it too. It's like the new Pig Latin. He invented I, it. I, I, know, I know what's happening It's half there. my conversations on Twitter. I need They're a fucking horde decoder to Totes. figure out what's going on. This guy's name is Sucky, S-U-K-K-Y, zero, our self. Oh, sucky, sucky yourself. Sucky yourself. <laughs> uh, you the man, bro. Your podcast has me crack, cracking up in my shitty cubicle all day. Looking forward to hearing this on the next episode. Um, and then this other guy wrote, I said I'd have my friend subscribe if you shout out to Snapchat. Shits and dicks only. B. Jake is God is his Snapchat. Yeah, he deserves some shits. <laughs> B. Jake, B. Jake is, is God. God. So those are your shout outs. If you want to shout out, just email with the title shout out to tfmpodcast at gmail.com and I'll read it on the air. Now we do Would You Rathers. Do you know these games? Yeah, sure. Of course. So it's like one or the other. Yeah. What, how would you? Sup, Jared? Uh, would you rather be able to pull chicks like James Bond? I'm talking 90 percent success race. Success race. Success rate uh, of intercoursing the ladies by just going to bars or any social setting. So you can either have the pull ratio of James Bond, or but the catch is you can never really get a nut. Oh. And every trip to Pound Town ends with either a sad dribble of cum or blue balls. So you can pull chicks, but you can't really come. That's well. useless. Or every time you masturbate, it feels better than the time before. I'd fucking masturbate all the time. Really? Yeah. Fuck yeah, I'd rather he do writes, the masturbating. Keep in mind, the first option ma- makes you a legend amongst your buddies. You're constantly banging girls who a normal dude dreams of, but you're never completely satisfied. The second option is pretty self-explanatory. Every time you beat your meat, it feels better, and eventually you might become a hermit because no woman mm-hmm. could ever come close to the orgasm you can give yourself. I still would rather just masturbate and come all the time because yeah. you know what? You're going to be nicer to your friends rather than being sexually frustrated. You won't have friends anyway. Mm. What do you think? Let me tell you something. You could still have sex. Finish yourself off. How about that? Yeah, well, I don't think that was one of the options. No, but well, that, I'm that's what I board, would. I, yeah, I think I'm with uh, Man Sample. Oh, I didn't this know one. we could do that. The <laughs> rules are new to me. I, I'm thinking I, at that point, you have your own personal porn memory bank. Do you feel sure. you're a good masturbator? Am I good at it yeah. on myself? Yeah. I, I think I'm a pro. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I, I'm a, you know, I've been working at it a long time. <laughs> and you enjoy you, it? Yeah. And I've, you make got, time to do it? I got 15 years in the game. <laughs> you put in the 10,000 yeah, hours. You're an expert. Put, yeah, yeah, listen. I, oh, it's what it takes is 10,000 hours? Yeah, yeah that's, that's what they say. I'm an reps. expert, man. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever, some people do that mutual masturbation thing where they'll like sit next to someone they're hooking up as they both masturbate. I don't get that. I mean, maybe if one hand was bound behind my back and I had no choice and was in prison, yes. But like if we can actually <laughs> you penetrate. You just wrote another porno. Uh, <laughs> here's another one. Would you rather, oh, I don't like that one. Um, 
Yo, Jay Twat, would you rather have your mom walk in on you <laughs> mid doggy style or not get laid for two years? <laughs> <laughs> two years, man. <laughs> two years? Yeah, I just don't want that. I, I can't. Two years or mid doggy style? Mid doggy style. I, I can't live with without you, sex for two years. It's not good for your skin. <laughs> Did you it, know right. that orgasms can prevent arthritis because it lubricates your joints? Like when I see a woman stiffly walking, I'm like, that bitch needs to get fucked because. That's what I'm going to start clearly, telling girls at the bar. <laughs> you look a little stiff. stiff. Yeah. Only you can prevent. <laughs> Prevent arthritis. <laughs> so we're gonna start you. going up to girls Only and saying, "Only you." I've I've sent these articles to my girlfriends who like are holding out all the time. Like, I want to get. Do you, you have better. friends that are like that? I, don't I have no have porno sex? friends. So, so all my friends are regular people who are out fighting the same fight. To either if they're in a relationship, they're happy, or they're trying to find regular sex. So, yeah. You know, and women get to an age where they start to hold out a little bit more, and I'm like, "What's the purpose of you holding out at this age? Just like, yeah. get it while you still." Have it good enough that you want to get naked in front of yes. people. Like, I feel like every day I'm clicking towards the no fun zone time, and I want to fuck around. I have a know? feeling you're gonna be fun for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I you're, gotta... you're in the fun zone. So okay. <laughs> Let's go to the news. Uh, all right, so this is a story that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. You weren't here for that, Lisa. But there was this guy that uh, had like a terrible accident when he was a kid. His penis came off or got messed up or whatever, so he had an, uh, an implanted one. Okay. Mm. Uh, listen to this shit. So this, so this. Uh, like woman was going to sleep with him. She's like a sex therapist or whatever. After he got the thing, <laughs> so the, I saw this. The guy, with, oh, okay. I saw this article. The I read this. Penis. Right. There okay. was a woman. She wasn't even that hot. Yeah. No. Well, but she was willing to do this guy a favor. Whatever. He was a forty-three. I wanted virgin. to do be the first person to fucking do with not a regular dick. Right. Well, there you go. She sure. should want to do it for that. It's a bucket yeah. list Would item. Would you do it? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, guy, you, this guy's just going to cancel that situation with so that So what did he do? Uh, he got in a car crash days before he was <laughs> set to lose his virginity. Oh, my God. And he has God. to wait even longer now. Oh, uh, this guy can't. He's not meant to have sex. He's not. He had a concussion. Oh, uh, Lisa's head wounds. dying laughing at this guy's misfortune. Oh, my God. That fucking sucks so bad. It's unbelievable, right? <laughs> is his new penis okay? <laughs> when it the, the penis is fine. When it the rains, it pours. Wow. <laughs> Can you imagine? He was probably sitting at the wheel just thinking. He's like, God, and like daydreaming. He's like, oh, it's going to be great when I fuck. Ah! That's exactly How right. is it not possible that Vivid hasn't offered him a contract? You know, it's such a unique right. item. I think he people would want to shoot it. Be an oh, absolutely, ugly yeah. fucking dude. He's, <laughs> he's average looking. Yeah. yeah, but whatever. He's got an eight inch. It's eight uh, inches. Yeah, inflatable dick now. So I've felt the pump in a guy's balls before. You the, did? There's these pumps. Yes, yeah, so a couple male performers have them, and they pump it up in their balls, and it deflates. So it's like an actual mechanism inside that creates an airspace and makes it bigger and harder. Really? What? And guys got that done? That's yeah, impor- it's pretty. That's performance cool. enhancing. I know. Technology, we, don't we allow that, that? shit. Fuck no. yeah, bring <laughs> it. Bring that dick. Okay, so let's go to the next story. Uh, so we know this Oregon militia thing is going on where these guys have kind of like taken a... Uh, yeah, a, I've heard of this. They've taken a, a, a federal building pretty much on, on a public they land. They couldn't, if you, you've heard this story, they couldn't look more like an Oregon militia. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's like they went to the costume store and were like, yeah, give us the Duck Dynasty ones. Uh, we don't want people to be confused. We don't want to be bunched into a group, but we'd like yeah. to look like that. <laughs> we want, uh, do you have any stains sweatshirts we can wear for this news opportunity. Uh, yeah. that, couldn't they have dressed up a little bit? Like well, They know they're making a stand. Totally. I mean, they're just going to be outside forever, though. That's the yeah. thing. They're just like hanging out outside this thing. But anyway, so they put a list on Twitter. Of, of, they all look like they have fake dicks. <laughs> so some they, of them might. Yeah, That's they, why they have all they those have guns. Like, they're just excited they, about it. They look like the, photo, the photos of people who had to stop smoking because they have holes in their throats. Yeah. You know? Like... <laughs> So what happened with them? So they're out there. They claimed that they had a ton of supplies. They didn't. So they put a, a whole list online of like sleeping bags, jackets, Should they, all the like stuff a that they want. Like a wish list? Exactly. Bastards. Yes. The, uh, but it turns out they've just been getting a lot of dildos from people. That That's hilarious. That is fantastic. This yeah, is when I lose. America's the best. Right? Every yeah. day I go back and forth between losing faith in the internet and having it restored. Right. And this is a story where the internet restores my faith in it. I yeah, agree. This of course. is one of those things where it's like, yeah, this is what it's all about. I don't want to hear about who you're voting for. I don't want to hear about what you think about gun control. I want to see dildos sent to idiots. Yeah, and I respect the fact that they're supporting all these companies making these toys. It's just yeah. great for product placement. Do you have and, a, uh, I feel like you would have a toy I have company. my own vagina and ass molded. My <laughs> fleshlight, of course. I would hope you have your own vagina. But and I, I mean, it's having it molded, it's like, it's such a great little giveaway thing. And it's like, you know, if an athlete gets a pair of sneakers named after him, why shouldn't I have my vagina molded? I totally agree. Someone's fucking it right now. I mean, this is Someone why this Absolutely. is why That's women why got the right fear. to vote. Yeah. To get you a 
molded vagina and, and ass. Don't yes, forget this is, you can have my this ass is why well. oh, I'm so happy about feminism. <laughs> this is what it's all about. Lisa, you want feminism? Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Any more stories? Uh, yeah, we could just do one more. Do I know one you're, more. you're into sports, Lisa. New Year's Eve playoff ratings were so bad for ESPN that they owe advertisers twenty million dollars. Yeah, this was a huge mistake. It was a yeah. dumb fucking idea. It was the dumbest the, idea ever. The yeah. dumbest well, yeah. idea. Because here's what they were... This is this is why I know... This is why made me understand why we haven't had a playoffs till now. Is the people in charge of these leagues are fucking so up their own ass and think so highly of their own opinion that they actually thought they could change people's New Year's Eve plans. Yeah. People of that age as well who aren't even at school because they're home on break. Yeah. Like the whole thing was just, this is what happens when 60-some-year-old white men that work for Disney make decisions. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, there, wasn't one, there wasn't one dude, like one guy's son or daughter that was in the room that was like, This is I'm asinine. Trying, yeah, this is still, I'm trying to get laid that night. Yeah. Right. I'm not trying to watch Michigan State. Well, and even if he wants to, the girl. There's also women that are not going to be watching the game. They don't want to waste their whole night playing football. Yeah, of course, it's a it's a party. I did like it though because it's always great to see ESPN like make a mistake just because they've been in a golden apple for so long. ESPN is getting a lot of haters these days. People are on the lookout for them. I just wrote an article for Complex Sports about the fact that you know when the Ashley Madison hack happened, 101 employees from ESPN were using their work email address. Is that right? Really? (laughs) That's that's hilarious. Well, yeah, that's so funny. Oh, man. Lisa. And like, I do business with some hosts from ESPN because I'm in some fantasy football leagues with mm. them. They're not allowed to follow me because I'm a previous porn star and Disney is owned by, uh, uh, and Disney owns ESPN. Well, that's so the it's like, really, you can't follow me on Twitter when you're getting prostitutes off right. of Ashley Madison's it's, site. Like, go oh, fuck your mother. It's so <laughs> funny because it's like, uh, it's so funny how seriously ESPN takes itself oh, yeah. in an unserious thing yeah. as such a sports. Right. Right. So like, that's why people hate on them so much because yeah. it's like, you guys guys treat this like it's like the fucking FBI right when we're just talking about fantasy sports right like, let it go a little bit right. every one of your guy every one of the guys that watches your network goes to games and yells obscenities I would like to say <laughs> that I, I beat Matthew Barry this year in Did fantasy you? football yes. that's a oh, talented Mr. Rota yeah. right yeah there we go Lisa thank you for coming on thanks for having this me this was such a pleasure we gotta have you back uh go follow Lisa on Twitter at the real Lisa Ann she's got a book the life Go get it. Amazon. The life, Lisa Ann. You got it. There we go. Mansamp, thank you for bringing the news. Thanks, dude. Uh, at Mansamp on Twitter, Mandatory Samson Podcast. Every Friday, I am Jared Freed. We are now here twice a week with the TFM Podcast, Tuesday and Friday. Please keep spreading the word, telling your friends. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, JTrain56. Uh, we will be back next week with your emails, TFM Podcast at gmail.com.